Iceland is a notoriously tough market for international fast food chains to break into. McDonald's, Dunkin' Donuts, and Burger King, they've all tried and failed in Iceland. But there is one American fast food chain that Icelanders are obsessed with, Domino's. Of the three big international chains with significant presence in Iceland, the pizza chain has the biggest market share in fast food by far. Domino's also has a huge footprint for the small island nation. There is a Domino's restaurant for every 14,000 people. Its owner says Icelandic Domino's are some of the best performing Domino's around the world by weekly sales. So Domino's decided to try to expand into Iceland's neighbors. In 1997, Domino's opened in Denmark, and then in Norway and Sweden in 2014 and 2016. But other parts of Scandinavia just aren't buying what Domino's is selling. In early 2019, Domino's Danish business went bankrupt. And in October of 2019, UK-based company Domino's Pizza Group which owns stores in Sweden, Iceland, and Norway, announced it would exit those markets. Its business there just isn't profitable, and now the company is looking for a buyer. Um, you know, I think a sale is a preferred option, but if they don't find a buyer, you know, let's not forget these are sort of sustained loss-making businesses. Um, they might not find a buyer for all of the markets, in which case they'll simply have to close them down. Closing those restaurants would be the last resort for Domino's Pizza Group. Considering the chain's track record of success in the UK and other parts of Europe, why is it that Domino's failed to deliver in most of the Nordics? Two Irish-American brothers, Tom and James Monahan, opened the first Domino's in Michigan in 1960. And by 1967, Domino's started opening franchise locations across the US. By 1978, it had grown to 200 stores. Domino's first international store opened in Canada in 1983. And as of 2019, there are 16,500 Domino's in more than 85 countries. And more than half of its sales come from outside of the US. Domino's has spread around the world thanks to franchising. The US-based Domino's Pizza partners with master franchisees in international markets who in turn can sub-franchise. The company looks for partners who have knowledge of the local market. That model lowers the risk of entering international markets for Domino's Pizza. Domino's presence in the Nordic region started in Iceland in 1993, and the brand was a hit. The local operator thought it could do well in Denmark too, where it arrived in 1997. But Domino's opened up shop in Norway in 2014 and expanded to Sweden in late 2016, but the brand doesn't have a presence in Finland. The business in Denmark went bankrupt after a TV network exposed poor hygiene and expired food at the restaurants. Another franchisee, Australian company Domino's Pizza Enterprises, paid about $2.8 million to buy stores in April 2019. The Australian company now operates in six European locations, plus Japan, Australia, and New Zealand. Of all those European markets, Domino's Iceland is a standout. Its owner says restaurants there have clocked higher average weekly sales than any other Domino's on the planet. But Iceland can't prop up the entire block. In the first half of fiscal year 2019, Domino's Pizza Group's international markets, which includes Norway, Sweden, and Iceland, had operating losses of $8.1 million. In fiscal year 2018, Sweden had the lowest average weekly sales per store for Domino's Pizza Group in the Nordics. Based on Domino's success in Iceland, the chain seemed poised to work well in other Nordic countries. The Nordic Bloc is a region of Northern Europe that includes Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Iceland, and their associated territories like Greenland. They're all independent countries, but they share key things in common. The Nordic economic model has strong labor unions, high taxes, and provides services like education and healthcare, making them expensive places to live. But the five Nordic countries are also wealthy. Their GDP per capita, a metric that breaks down the country's GDP per person, ranks within the top 10 in Europe. The Nordic countries take pride in their culinary traditions. After a period of industrial food production that brought processed food to the Nordics, in the early 2000s, there was a shift toward more organic and locally produced food. Eating habits in the Nordic countries put strong emphasis on families eating together at home. Responses to a survey conducted in 1997 and then again in 2012 showed that family meals hadn't decreased in Nordic homes, despite the fears that introduction of fast food in the 1990s would drastically reduce the number of families opting to eat at home. In the Nordic countries, health and wellness are also important values. A survey of Nordic people predicted that some of the biggest Nordic food trends in 2019 will be meat-free proteins, holistic diets, and baking pastries with beans. So where does fast food fit in? 
nor do consumers have not embraced global fast food chains as fully as other countries. And when they do opt to eat on the go, more often than not, they're opting for local chains rather than global fast food restaurants. Consumers tend to prefer local chains for a couple of different reasons. Part of it has to do with loyalty and trust. In both Sweden and Norway, global brands have a stigma of being unethical, and consumers perceive them to be prioritizing profits above all else, as opposed to local brands. In terms of competition, um, these, these two countries are, are quite interesting because they have very, very strong local brands, as evidenced, for example, by the case of Sweden and the burger competition in this country. Uh, so there is a big local brand called Max and uh, quite su successfully man manages to, to challenge established players like McDonald's due to local appeal, local expertise in the market. Nor do consumers also take pride in supporting local brands. Analysts say local restaurants have more market knowledge in fast food than international chains do, and they are faster at adapting menus to local tastes. Take for example the meat-free trend in Norway. Swedish burger chain Max jumped on the trend early, offering meat-free burgers. It set off a domino effect, and McDonald's ultimately introduced a veggie mixed spice and two vegetarian wraps in 2017. In both Sweden and Norway, the pizza market is highly fragmented, with local and independent chains making up more than half of the market in the two countries. The biggest pizza chain in Norway is locally run Pepe's Pizza, which has 39.1% of the market as of 2018. Domino's tried growing quickly in Norway by buying another Norwegian chain called Dolly Dimples in May 2017. It was a massive expansion of Domino's footprint, but analysts say it presented some problems too. Um, so I think when they acquired the business, they thought it would be a very simple, um, you're buying a pizza operator, um, you kind of change the logos, change the product a bit, and, um, and suddenly the store goes from being a local pizza restaurant to a Domino's pizza restaurant. Um, instead, what they didn't realize was that this business wasn't really set up in the same way as a classic sort of pizza takeaway company. Analysts say Dolly Dimples wasn't particularly efficient and Domino's didn't have enough demand to keep up with its new large footprint. Converting Dolly Dimple stores into Domino's increased order counts and sales for the chain, but the stores weren't profitable. Plus, converting them took time and money, which was especially problematic in an expensive country like Norway. In the US, Domino's won the pizza wars with delivery. But the Nordic countries are among the smallest markets for food delivery. That was a big part of the problem in Norway when Dolly Dimples was taken over by Domino's. Dolly Dimples was more about dining in rather than taking out for delivery, pretty much the opposite of Domino's typical strategy. The market for delivery in Scandinavia is small. That's partly due to the fact that population density of the Nordic countries is low, so delivery drivers have to travel further distances. It also didn't help that Domino's entered Norway and Sweden just as the delivery wars were heating up. While the market for delivery is relatively small there, a handful of companies compete for the market share. If in the past the Minos Pizza was unique because not, not many other restaurants would deliver food to consumers, nowadays almost every restaurant, a vast majority of restaurants in Norway and Sweden are working with the delivery services, which means that their competition um, is much wider uh, than it was in the past. On a call with analysts, the CEO of the local franchise running Domino's in Iceland, Sweden, and Norway said it was considering eliminating delivery entirely from certain stores at lunchtime in Norway. Analysts say that this was likely due to lack of demand. Frozen pizza is also huge in Scandinavia. Instead of ordering delivery, some people might choose frozen pizza instead, especially in Norway, which has the highest spending per person on frozen pizza of any country. Norwegians spend almost $56 per person on frozen pizza each year. One frozen pizza brand estimates Norwegians eat approximately 47 million frozen pies every year. Living in the Nordic countries is relatively expensive compared to the US. That has a lot to do with higher taxes to pay for social welfare system and higher costs of goods and services. Domino's Pizza Group, the franchisee in the Nordic countries, cited high labor costs as one of the reasons its business was unprofitable. In Iceland, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark, there's no national minimum wage but there are very powerful trade unions. These unions and other employee groups negotiate fair wages by industry, experience, and age. I mean, even despite the fact that these countries don't have 
a minimum wage, the basically labor laws, the, the bargaining power of, of workers is very, very strong. In Nordics, uh, the quality are uh, quite strongly embedded in, in their culture. So it's quite hard to optimize and cut, cut down on labor costs. In the case of Norway, workers above the age of 20 in hotel, restaurant, and catering industry must be paid at least $18 an hour. That's almost double what minimum wage employees in the UK are paid. Minimum wage in Britain dictates a worker between the age of 21 and 24 years old must earn just above $10 an hour. When part of what makes pizza attractive to customers is its affordability, high labor costs can drag down a business. You know, this model works if you've got relatively cheap labor where you can get people just to churn out pizzas and you make them quite a nice margin on that. Um, so they want to sort of pitch it as a, as a mid-market takeaway or, or delivery um, option. But if the cost of the labor producing that is prohibitive, and your margins get squashed, then I think that is probably one of the big contributors to the fact that it was loss-making um, in recent quarters. Domino's may feel more of a squeeze from high labor costs as the Nordic economies slow. Global trade tensions and a variety of domestic problems are causing a slowdown in the Nordics, according to a 2019 Reuters poll. Particularly in Iceland, where Domino's has been the strongest, the chain is struggling due to weak macroeconomic conditions. While Domino still makes money there, it's not as profitable as the market once was. In the third quarter of fiscal year 2019, same-store sales in Iceland were down 8.2%. Company executives cited a decline in tourism and a weak market overall. It also shut down one of its locations that quarter. If you look at um, the macro data in Iceland, it's certainly not as good as it's been in previous years. Um, and in all of these places, um, as I said, you know, this high operating cost markets, um, those costs sort of increase every year and you need to be generating uh, more sales in order to um, compensate for that. Domino's Pizza Group, the UK-based chain that owns Domino's in the Nordics, also has problems at home. Shares of Domino's Pizza Group have fallen about 25% from their peak in 2016. It's fighting with sub-franchisees over how it shares the profits and facing weak consumer confidence as Brexit looms. Domino's Pizza Group was unable to comment due to the ongoing transaction. But even its management has said, they just weren't the right ones to be running a business in Sweden, Norway, and Iceland. The CEO of Domino's Pizza Group, which is the master franchisee of the US Domino's, said that his company was not the best owners of these businesses. Now Domino's Pizza Group is in the midst of selling its international business. That includes Domino's stores in Iceland, Sweden, and Norway, as well as its business in Switzerland. Analysts say that these restaurants could be sold as a group of four or individually. In Sweden, um, I think there's a possibility of finding um, someone who might be willing to just buy that outright um, because while well, it's making a big loss, it's, it's very early stage business. It's not got the same kind of potential structural problems that sort of Norway and Switzerland have. Domino's unprofitability in parts of the Nordic bloc may make finding a buyer difficult and flat out closing those restaurants would be the last resort. But there is hope for the American chain. Even Domino's in Denmark found a buyer after the local Domino's franchisee went bankrupt in 2019. Domino's has been successful in other European markets. That shows that the Nordic countries probably aren't a lost cause. Analysts say acquisition by US-based Domino's or the Australian-based Domino's is possible for the business in Iceland, Sweden, and Norway, or a local operator could take over. With little to no competition from global pizza chains, Domino should have been in prime position to succeed in Scandinavia. But the big question now, will Scandinavians ever give up local pizzas in favor of Domino's pies?